Okay, wrapping it up. Flee immorality, 18 and 20. Flee immorality. Every other sin that man commits is outside the body, but the immoral man sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you have been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Again, the body, something special. Glorify God. Your body is not your own. Something about your body. Don't you know that your body is not your own? Something about the body. And something about, remember, raised and changed and glorified. I don't understand everything about why my body is so special to Jesus. Because to me, it needs to be thrown out. Because <laughs> I don't like it, and I'm disgusted with my flesh, all the things that it's done. But Jesus has a preference for it, according to his word. He has a preference for my body that doesn't relate to anything else. Because it's going to be raised and changed and uplifted according to him. So I'm learning a new value for it, knowing I take care of it terribly. I give it no value, and I'm just irritated with it. Because it just... Bodies are useless, and they're so fleshly. <laughs> okay? All right, all right. So now we understand a little more about every other sin is outside the body in verse 18. Now we're understanding why sex. Why sex? Well, why are you picking on my sexual activity? And why does it always have to be sex? And why is sex such a, such a gripping thing? Well, God is telling us now, plain and simple, there is a sense in which sexual sin destroys a person like no other because sexual sin is so intimate and entangling, corrupting on the deepest human level. Paul may also be alluding to venereal disease, which was prevalent and devastating in his day as well as today. No sin has greater potential to destroy the body, something a believer should avoid because of the reality described in verse 19 and 20. Well, let's read 19 and 20. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you have been bought with a price, Therefore, glorify God in your body. I'm learning to glorify Him. I want to glorify Him more. I see how my body is useless flesh, but in my body, I want to learn to glorify Him. I want to learn these things. I understand now why the sexual sin is far more important to God than any other sin. So, maybe a curse word or maybe stealing an apple from the, the food court. That's a sin. But God is saying that no other sin but sexual sin has more of an intensity to destroy the body because of its intimate and entangling and corrupting power on the deepest human level. I know that we know all sin is sin, but... The very word of Jesus Christ is saying the sexual sin is the one that's really killing us the most. And I have to admit, it's been such a destroyer in my life. It's been such a, it's so powerful. It's so dominant and it's so destructive. Not your own. Body is not your own. Verse 19. A Christian's body belongs to the Lord. Verse 13. Christian's body is a member of Christ, verse 15. And the Christian's body is the Holy Spirit's temple, verse 19. Every act of fornication, adultery, or any other sexual sin is committed by the believer in the sanctuary. Now you see why, again, why it's doubly important. Because when we fornicate, when we commit adultery, when we have sex outside of marriage, 
Every act of sexual sin is done in the sanctuary. Do you guys remember when um, the story about the, the Pharisees and stuff, they had a room inside the temple, and in that room they had like prostitutes and things? Does everybody remember reading that in the Old Testament? See, they had a room, and Jesus was just horrified by them, okay? They had a room inside God's temple, in the temple that Solomon built, where they had um, sexual uh, women, orgies, if you will. And that was part of the temple. So the reason I say that is because how bad it was, because Jesus said, you're doing this in the temple. And so the comparison is, where is the temple now? Where is the sanctuary? They say, you're doing it in the sanctuary. So the greatest caution of all is that when we do things sexually, it says, let me repeat, every sexual sin committed by the believer is committed in the sanctuary. So we're guilty of taking God into the sanctuary and the horrible thought of the Pharisees had a room that was filled with sexual activity in God's sanctuary. You see the correlation? And so they were guilty, we're guilty, Lord, we're all guilty, right? But now you understand. Did you know there was a correlation? Did you know? As Do believers know? Do believers know in the world, Christians, that there's a correlation between what the Pharisees did with that secret room filled with prostitutes? That when we take our bodies and join them sexually and we have encounters and we date, that we're violating the sanctuary. I don't think that they do because I'm really taking a new understanding of it myself. Okay, just studying this word and realizing I'm doing what they did. See, and that alone tells me, uh-oh, I'm in trouble somewhere here, you know. Now I'm doing what they did, and that alone tells me that I need to think about this really serious, really quick, and all of a sudden, I don't want to be like them. I don't want to do that. You are charged with, we are charged with a great, great responsibility. And we have no way of being perfect in it. The only thing we have is truth on our side. And the truth will set you free. The Holy of Holies... Committed in the sanctuary relates to the Holy of Holies, where God dwells. In the Old Testament, he dwelt in the temple, where the priest only went there once a year, and only after extensive cleansing, lest he be killed. Today, the sanctuary is inside of us. And that's the way that it is. Be careful. Watch yourself. Be repentant. Guard your temple. Guard the sanctuary. Clean it up. Clean up the sanctuary. If you have a room in it with things, clean it out. Try to clean, you know, think about it. Clean the room out. Throw them out. Do something. Clean it. And we're all capable of doing that. Make your life better. Bought for a price, verse 20. The purchase price is the precious blood of Jesus Christ. That's why your body's not your own. Because you were bought at a price. And the price was the precious blood of God's Son. Your body is not your own. Body is not your own to go and join with these things and do these things. And we just need to have a greater understanding. This is going to help us, not condemn us. There's no shame and no condemnation for those in Christ. The word is to help us, improve us, guide us, and lead us to a better life. To a cleaner sanctuary. Right? Okay, glorify God, the Christian's supreme purpose. Glorifying God is the supreme purpose of a Christian. That's why you'll see, uh, when I was asleep, and I prayed God would give us a uh, discipleship um, uh, quote. We needed a discipleship process. And I woke up one night, and I had been praying with Mary Jane, and you'll see why... Um, I woke up about 2 in the morning and I wrote down the words that God gave me and it was receive, transform, and glorify. Receive Christ into your heart, transform your life by his word, and glorify God. And you'll notice on the back of our card, I always put it there and I had Jane put it here when we start. 
Receive, transform, and glorify. That's our discipleship strategy at Kingdom Work Ministries. You take an unbeliever, receive Christ, transform your life by his word, and glorify God. And that is the supreme purpose of a Christian. There it is. Thank you, Jane. Receive, transform, and glorify. Given to me in a dream after I prayed for God. And I woke up at two in the morning and said, I've got it, Mary Jane, our discipleship strategy. And I wrote those words down and I've never changed them. That was it. And that was it. Receive, transform, and glorify. It's a beautiful thing. Receive Jesus as your personal Savior. Transform your life by his word. And glorify God and honor him. And that is the strategy that we propose for someone who doesn't know God. And they say, what do I do? There you go. Receive, transform, and glorify. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Transform. Receive, transform, and glorify. 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. Knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold from your feudal way of life inherited from your forefathers, but with precious blood as of a lamb, unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ, confirming the price that bought you, Jesus' blood. Your body is not your own. You were bought with that blood. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Whether then you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Just a verse that, was, that came up in my study that simply says, glorify God. Whether then you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. Amen. All right. Thank you, guys. All right, we're going to go into our time of worship now. I'm going to ask God to bless, to write his word on your hearts, to show you how to improve your temple, how to cleanse your temple. God, ah. please, Lord, I know, Lord, that your word is doing a mighty work.